In its press release in March 2025, Gartner predicted that by the year 2028, one third of all Gen AI interactions will be using autonomous agents and action models. What that means is that in the near future, a large portion of AI systems will be able to function without human intervention. They will be able to understand intent, plan actions, execute actions, And unlike traditional software applications, they will be able to learn and adapt as they go. Today, we are already seeing this in the form of AI agents. While traditional software applications tend to be deterministic in nature, AI agents because of the decision making and reasoning involved in planning actions and executing actions, they tend to be dynamic and non-deterministic. Now it is exactly this dynamic and non-deterministic nature of AI agents that makes evaluation of AI agents extremely important. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say you are building an AI agent that helps customers find their dream home. Now you could go about this in multiple ways, but one way to do that is by having an LLM based component that has back and forth interactions with the customers. This component is responsible for extracting key pieces of information from the customer, like what is the square footage that they're looking for? What are the beds and bats that they prefer? What is the locality that they're looking for and things like that. Now it's going to take that information and it's going to search a database to retrieve all the available homes that meet their criteria. And in order to do that, we need to power this agent with tools. Now the tools could be anything. For one, we have search, where it searches a database. We could also have a calendar tool that actually makes a call to the calendar and schedules a meeting with a realtor or a showing with a realtor. The agent could also call a function that computes the mortgage payment for the customer to make a decision. It could also initiate a pre-approval process if needed. Now, in order for the agent to do all of that and to make sure that it's not asking the customer repeated uh, questions, we need to make sure that it also contains memory where it can store logs and other key pieces of information in order to conduct a natural conversation with the customer. Now, as you can see, there's a lot going on here, which is exactly why a lot could go wrong. We need to make sure that we look at all the different routes this agent is taking to make sure that it is ready to be put into production. The key questions that you need to be asking are, what if the customer provides partial information? What route is the agent taking then? What if the customer does not want to provide a piece of information? Is the agent resorting to manipulative behavior to nudge the customer into providing that? Because that is wrong. What happens if the agent extracts the information, does a search, but nothing comes up? Now these are key questions, and we also need to make sure that the agent is adopting the right tone. We need to make sure that it's not being sarcastic or passive aggressive, or making snide comments on the customer's preferences. Now that is also important to ensure a good customer experience. Because there is so much going on, it's very important to evaluate these agents. Now let's look at certain recommendations on how we can go about structuring these evaluations to make sure that we minimize these erratic behaviors that the agents can have. So you would start off by determining your metrics. Now these metrics could be performance metrics. They could also be use case specific metrics or metrics from the standpoint of regulatory compliance. Some examples include metrics such as accuracy, latency, error rate, task completion rate, etc. You could also be looking at regulatory compliance metrics such as bias, explainability, source attribution, HAP score, toxicity score, etc. You could also be looking at adversarial robustness because it's really important. Let me explain why. Let's say you have a customer who wants to 
scam your application, who wants to be a fraud. So they might trick your agent into divulging information that it's not supposed to be divulging. In that case, it's very important that you configure adversarial robustness to make sure that your agent is behaving predictably in different kinds of scenarios. Now, once you have those metrics figured out, the next thing you would do is you would prepare data. Now, when you do this, you need to make sure that you account for all kinds of scenarios and all kinds of routes that your agent is likely to take. Simulate as many real world scenarios as possible. Also, in your metrics, if you have metrics that require ground truth data, make sure you capture that data set so that you can compute the metrics once you capture our agent outputs. So once you have that data figured out, the next thing you would do is you would write the code. So if you have ground truth data, you need code to compare that data with the output of your agent to compute the metrics that are necessary. So you will be writing that code that does the comparison for you in this stage. Let's say you're also using some techniques like LLM as a judge. Now this is a very popular technique where you would use a large language model to look at the output of an agent and determine if it's good or not. So if you are using that technique, you would be writing the prompts for LLM as a judge. Now once you have the code written out, the next thing that you would do is you will run the tests. Now you will run the test for all the different scenarios and capture the data. In this stage, you will also be testing out the tool integrations that you have configured here. You will make sure that all the tool calling is happening as expected so that the customer gets a seamless experience while using your agent. Now once you finish running the tests, you would then assess the outcomes. You would look at all the data that you have captured and make an assessment on your agent. Now, if there are certain trade-offs that you need to do, at that, this is the stage where you would be making those calls. For example, if you, if you have poor metrics on both accuracy and latency, you have to make a call on which metric you're going to sacrifice to get a better outcome on the other. So after you make those assessments, you will take note of those things. And you will also figure out you know, what portions of your AI agents you're going to tweak in order to optimize the flow and make it better. Once you have those figured out, then you could go about the actual task of optimizing. And of course, you will be iterating. So you will optimize the flow in order to make sure that those metrics that are important for you are being calculated and are actually giving you a good result. You would also make sure that the tool calling, if there are any issues in the tool calling, you are also going to debug that in this stage. And you will also have to probably fine tune certain prompts that you're using, either in the agent or in your LLM as a judge, to make sure that it's yielding the expected outcome. Once you do all the optimization, you would obviously iterate. It's extremely important to understand that building agents is an iterative process. And testing agents is also an iterative process because it's impossible to come up with all the different scenarios that your agent might take that might happen in production. So it's very important to also configure uh, monitoring of agents in production and to funnel all the data back from production into the development so you build a more robust and a better next version of your agents. I hope you found this information helpful.